In no way is God seeking his own glory self-centered or selfish because the nature of these virtues are selfless. They're all selfless. Love is selfless. Grace is selfless. Truth is selfless. I'm saying that God is the source of it all. Every good and perfect thing comes from above. He's the source. And because he's the source, he is sovereign. He's the creator. He's sovereign. I'm not sure that I've made the point uh, clear around his sovereignty. Um, what I want to what I want to do um, is is to point out that because God is the source, the infinite source of all that is good. That means he has to know what all good there is. (laughs) I'm going to rephrase that. If God is the source of all that is good, the infinite capabilities of goodness in mankind, in this world, in everything that there is, because God is the infinite source, that means he has to know what is good. He has to know all that is good because he is that is that which is good and if he knows all that is good we just attributed omniscience to god you, do you do you see the the philosophical and logical conclusion that you have to come to if you acknowledge that god is the source of all that is good god is loving god is good god is truth god is gracious And if he is these things, and if he is all these things, then he has to be omniscient. He has to know all things. The next step is, if he knows all things, he must be everywhere. Because he has to see all things. All right? Omniscience leads to uh, omnipresence. He has to be everywhere because he has to know everything. How can I say I know all things, but I don't know where you are? How can I say I know all things about you, but I have not been everywhere you have been? And think about that. If he's been everywhere you've been, he's got to be everywhere, 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 where, everywhere everyone else has been. This is the omnipresence of God understood from the omniscience of good of God understood from the the source of of, of, of the, the, the the infinite source that God is. Who God is leads to his godship. The point I'm making. From there, if God is the source of all that's good, if God sees everything, that means he must know everything. It just follows that he must have all power. (laughs) He is omnipotent. Uh, And I'm pretty sure I'm missing something because I'm vamping. But um, the point I'm making is God is sovereign. And I think that in at least that, that little bit of discussion, you can see God is sovereign over everything. He controls everything. So these beautiful truths exude from the I am. This is my memorial name to all generations. And so the question then is, if God is all these things, he is good, he's loving, he's gracious, salvation, he's omnipresent, omnipotent, uh, omniscient. If these things are true, what is his purpose? We talked about it. We brought it up a little earlier. What is his purpose in doing these things? Um, I want to fast track a little bit, um, but I'll, I'll take us to John, the 11th chapter. John, the 11th chapter, um, and we'll stick with NIV here. Um, 
I want to read uh, John the eleventh chapter. We're uh, I want to find the verse here. Uh, we we know the story. Um, uh, uh, Lazarus has died. Sorry for the delays there. Lazarus has died, and um, Jesus is distraught at the at the news of this. He, But but he takes his time <laughs> at the news that Lazarus is sick. He takes his time um, and, and and comes later on, days later. Verse thirty eight of John chapter eleven it says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he's been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? I want you to uh, uh, understand. Uh, we're, we could back up to verse 4. It says, Sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. You know, there are problems on this earth that are monumental. We could deal with health crises, family crises, marital crises, um, issues on the job, problems with your child, problems with your finances. There, there, there are big problems through the land. I, mean, I don't have to list them all. The point I'm making in that is that there, there, these problems may not, in your reckoning, compare to the problem of death. <laughs> no one wants to die. Well, <laughs> you may have played the game when you were a kid, or you're just a gone through this thought experiment as a kid well you know oh you got a stub toe well at least you're not dead <laughs> not sure what kid plays that game but maybe i uh maybe i did i don't remember but i assume it's a child child type child like exercise um you know that's a big problem obviously i love that jesus makes it clear no your problem is not a, a, a matter or, 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 or problem of, of finance. It's a problem of glory. If you understand the problem of God and your problems, it's a problem of glory. You know, God wants the glory out of your problem. And yes, we will benefit, but he wants the glory. That's the ultimate um, um, desire. In everything that God does, he desires the glory. If I were to answer what is God's ultimate purpose in being loving and being good and being salvation and being omni-everything, it is glory. He wants glory. He wants praise, acknowledgement, worship. He wants focus. He wants the spotlight. And and And, and it may not jive with you i hope it does but if it doesn't you know i hope that we can clear that up it may not jive with you that in all these things god just wants the glory i don't mean to make light of it he wants the attention that's what he wants i hope that you understand the the the, the reverence behind that phrase he wants it and he deserves it he's creator Everything he does, he does it for his own glory. And here in John chapter 11, we're seeing that. Lazarus has died. And he's saying, wait a minute. It's going to benefit you, Martha, in, in verse 40. It's going to benefit you, Mary. You're, you're both going to get your brother back. But remember, I'm doing this for my glory. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and you know interjecting a little, little into the scripture. But the point is, it's clear he's doing this so that he might be glorified. He's doing this in your life so that he might be glorified through you. The problems that you're going through are not problems of finance, are not problems of, of your marital issues, not problems of, 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 of job issues. They're problems of glory. If you really want to understand that, you go through the Bible and understand you know, when he deferred his anger, he was doing it for his glory. When he chose a people for himself, he did it for his glory. When he uh, called Israel or, or, or led them uh, out, of the, uh, uh, out of the land of Egypt, it was for his glory. I want to go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 3. Verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, God's intent was that now, through the church, through us, his manifold wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God, should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love it. God, his plan for salvation, his plan that we're all going through, we're part of it, that is. It was so that he might get the glory. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, make it clear. It's about his glory. It's about glorifying him. You know, I... I I, I, I will leave this um, for you to think about some more. Um, but the point of it all is, you know, when we go through things, how do we go through it? Think about it. Are we going through it with a woe is me, nobody's known the trouble I've seen um, attitude? Or are we going through it with the mindset that we must glorify God? even in the midst of what we're going through. How do you respond to this truth that God does everything for his glory? Are you upset about that? Do you think to yourself, um, oh, that's selfish. God shouldn't do everything for himself. You see, there's a misconception with the righteous glory that God seeks. Uh, you see, we have such a skewed human view of things. We look at things and we get upset when someone wants to make it all about themselves. See, the only person, if you will, uh, that, that deserves that attention is God. The only person that deserves uh, to make it about himself is God. Um. It's the, but, but, but the question that you may ask yourself, well, how can he say that he is doing it all for his glory, but he's love? Think about it. Love is selfless. Grace, grace is selfless. And so by being gracious to us, he's being, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's glorifying grace. <laughs> If you will, he wants us to glorify who he is, and that's grace. And how do we do that? By being gracious to other people. Think about that. I, I, I want to break this down and, and I want to take it really slow, even though we're right here on time. I hate to take you too long. Um, I'm going to read it here. It says, if God is love, how is it that he seeks his own glory in all things? Does God uh, God does all things for his glory. Does that make him selfish or self-centered? Uh, how can a God, how can God be loving and giving and self-sacrificing if he only does things for his own glory? 
Does the truth that God seeks his own glory contradict who God is? The answer is no, by no means. When God seeks his own glory, he's seeking the glory of love. Think about it. If God is love. and He's seeking glory. He's seeking the glory of love. If God is 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 seeking his own glory, he's seeking the glory of truth, of life, of light, of grace and healing. In no way is God seeking his own glory, self-centered or selfish, because the nature of these virtues are selfless. They're all selfless. Love is selfless. Grace is selfless. Truth is selfless. So can you think of an aspect of God in which it seems that it's selfish in nature? The answer is no. You may rack your brain on that. No. And so how do we respond to this now? Um, Again, I'm going to fast track this thought. Um, If you have the lesson, go through the scriptures. Um, I'll tell you now, though, Matthew 5, 16, Colossians 3, 17, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. How do we respond to who God is and the glory that he seeks in who he is? How do we respond? We, seek, we respond by uh, uh, living in a way that reflects him, that glorifies love, that glorifies truth, that glorifies graciousness and grace, gracefulness. The grace that he's given us. And so how do we do that? We, we, we love one another. Here it is. We be truthful to one another. That's giving glory to, glo- to love. That's giving tr- glory to truth. We, 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 we give God glory by acting or uh, striving to be as he is. Do you see it? Be holy as I am holy. In this lesson, um, you know, we've gone through a number of things of who God is. We've gone through a number of things of, of, of why he does what he does. He's doing it for his glory. And I skimmed over a part that, that talked about how, how uh, uh, if you sum up all the good that God is, it, it, it has an etymological root for the word holy. Holy is the whole or complete or fullness of of a matter, right? And so when you talk about holy, God is the wholeness, the completeness, or the fullness of all that is good and loving and perfect and loving. And, and, and it's, it's, go, go check out the lesson. <laughs> the point of the matter is, he says, be holy, be complete in love. Be holy as I am holy. Be uh, uh, full in graciousness. Be, 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 be complete, be whole in, in, in self-sacrificing attributes. Be full in truth. Be holy as he is holy. That's the point of this lesson. That's the problem of God in who God is. And remember, we're talking about the problem to us, not the problem that he has. He has no problems. Uh, if you think about it, that's, a, that's one you could spend a whole lifetime on. Let's uh, close in prayer. Father, we thank you for being loving, gracious, salvation, your light and truth. And we love you, Father. Father, we ask you to help us be these things as you are. Work through us that we might be loving. Work through us that we might be full of joy. In some way, a source of joy to others in this sad time. This tumultuous time. You you know everything that's going on in our country. We pray for uh, our leaders. We pray for our government, president, everyone who making decisions for the people. I pray that you be in process, that you would ease the divisions that are in our land. Would help us be uniters as you are 
uniter. You and he said in, in John that, that that you, Jesus, and the Father are one, right? And so that you are united. Father, help us be united. We love you, Father. You need to teach us. Jesus. Name. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of Refuge Church Nashville. We're so grateful that we could uh, be a part of your spiritual life and growth. We want you to know that if you go to our website at refugechurchnashville.com dash groups, there are so many online Bible studies that you can uh, be a part of. Uh, also, there are study notes available for this particular study as well, all on that group's page. Also, we would love to hear from you. So if, um, if there's any kind of a decision that you've made or any ways that we can pray for you, just go to our homepage. Once again, refugechurchnashville.com. And there's a button on the front page that says, we want to hear from you. You can leave a comment in that box and we will get back to you. Guys, thank you so much. God bless.